right question Bigger than anything God is bigger than any mountain That I can or cannot see Bigger than all the shadows That fall across my path God is bigger than any mountain That I can or cannot see Bigger than all confusion Bigger than anything God is bigger than any mountain that I can or cannot see. Bigger than all my problems, bigger than all my fears, God is bigger than any mountain that I can or cannot see. Bigger than all my questions, bigger than anything, God is bigger than any mountain that I can. See. Bigger than all the giants of fear and unbelief, God is bigger than any mountain that I can or cannot see. Bigger than all my hang-ups, bigger than anything, God is bigger than any mountain that I can or cannot see. Bigger than all my problems, bigger than all my fears, God is bigger than any mountain that I can or cannot see. Bigger than all my questions, bigger than anything, God is bigger than any mountain that I can or cannot see. Bigger than all my problems, bigger than all my God is bigger than any mountain that I can or cannot see. Bigger than all my questions, bigger than anything. God is bigger than any mountain that I can or cannot see. My God is bigger than any mountain that I can or cannot see. Praise the Lord. So thankful for that. Amen. The Bible says, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. I hope you've blessed the Lord today and everything that you've done. But we've come tonight to worship the Lord, and it's so good to see everyone tonight. We want to welcome some visitors that we have. Stop by the Welcome Center, if you will, on your way out. And we have, would like to greet you and, and talk with you. But um, just looking forward to what God has in store for us tonight. I do have a few quick announcements. We do have our Men and Ladies Fellowship tomorrow night at 6. Everyone's invited to come. We have a meal at 6 o'clock. And then we have our fellowship meetings. So come out tomorrow night. It's at 6 o'clock in the fellowship hall. Also, this Sunday morning, we have a special group, Walking by Faith. They'll be singing this, this Sunday morning in the service. Looking forward forward to that. Amen. Also, there's a children's Christmas program practice Sunday at six o'clock. So if you, if you know children that would like to be in the Christmas program, please be here Sunday evening. They'll be practicing, um, I guess, part of children's church, but um, looking forward to the kids having a Christmas program. And then lastly, we do have a church Christmas dinner coming up on the 12th, and there's a sign-up sheet at the Welcome Center, so please see that sign-up sheet. So looking forward to all that God has in store for us. But invite, let's invite the Lord's presence tonight. Lord, we do praise you. We thank you, Father, for your faithfulness. And Lord, we do invite your presence and power in the service tonight. We pray, Holy Spirit, that you would have full control of everything that is said and done and that everything that is said and done will be done for one purpose, and that is to lift up Jesus Christ, that souls would be saved and lives would be changed. We thank you, Father God, for your faithfulness. We thank you for the soul that was saved Sunday. But, Lord, we know that there's more that need to come to Jesus Christ. And so, Lord, may we be vessels, Lord, that you could fill and empower and use, Lord, to continue to see people one into the kingdom of God. We pray your blessing upon the live stream tonight, that it would reach many souls. And, Lord, we just commit the service into your hands. May your will be accomplished, and we give you all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Let's remain standing tonight as we worship the Lord in song. 
The Bible tells us, the psalmist says, I will enter his gates with thanksgiving uh, and I will enter his courts with praise. Amen. And so the Bible also tells us that God inhabits the praises of his people. So let's praise the Lord in song tonight and sing this one. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. I will say this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad I will rejoice for He has made me glad He has made me glad He has made me glad I will rejoice for He has made me glad Let's say it again I will enter His gates with thanksgiving in my heart I will enter His courts with praise I will say this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for He has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for He has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for He has made me glad. I will rejoice for He has made me glad. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. That the Lord has made. We will rejoice. We will rejoice and be glad. That the Lord has made. Are you rejoicing in it? We will rejoice. We will rejoice and be glad in it. And be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day. This is the day. And gathered in his name to worship him. Oh, we have come into his house and gathered in his name to worship Christ the Lord. Worship him, Christ the Lord. Let's forget about ourselves and magnify His name and worship Him. Let's forget about ourselves and magnify His name and worship Him. Let's forget about ourselves and magnify His name. And worship Christ the Lord. Worship Him, Christ the Lord. Yes, we have come into His house and gathered in His name to worship Go! 
gathered in his name to worship Christ the Lord. Worship him, Christ the Lord. So let's worship him, Christ. Blessed Redeemer, sing over His wonderful love, proclaim. Hail Him, hail Him, highest archangels in glory, strength and honor give to His holy name. Like a shepherd, Jesus will guard His children. In His arms, He carries them all day long. Excellent greatness, praise Him, praise Him, ever in joyful song. Praise Him, praise Him, Jesus our blessed Redeemer. For our sins He suffered and bled and died. He our rock, our hope of eternal salvation. Wonderful, deep and strong. Praise Him, praise Him. Tell of His excellent greatness. Praise Him, praise Him. Ever in joyful song. Praise Him, praise Him. Jesus, our blessed Redeemer. Heavenly portals, cloudless and His rain. Jesus, Savior. Reigneth forever and ever. Crown him, crown him, prominent priest and king. Christ is coming over the world victorious. Power and glory unto the Lord belong. Praise him, praise him, tell of his excellent greatness. Praise him, praise him, ever in joyful song. That's why you came tonight, to praise Him and give Him glory. He certainly deserves it, and He alone deserves it tonight. We want to magnify His name in everything we do. We're come to the part of the service, really, that's really, other than the challenge for your soul, it's the most important time. And really, I, I used to tell people, you know, if you're, not, if, you're, if you're not saved and you have a question about where you stand right now, it would be a perfect time for you to come. You wouldn't have to be worried about somebody pointing you out. Just come right up here and pray to the Lord. I'm sure he can hear your prayer right now as well as he can at the end of the service. So I'm very thankful that we have the opportunity to go to him in prayer tonight. We were having prayer uh, tonight before church, and there was, a, there was just a few of us, but there was a lot of need. And the Lord knows about our needs before we even ask. But he tells us to ask, and if we ask faith believing, I told him last night, I said, sometimes people come down and they just ask. They just ask to be talking. If you, if you don't believe that God can, God won't. You have to believe that God will. And if you'll come faith believing, there's nothing that God can't do for us. And I'm very thankful to know that I've come to the right place at the right time for the right purpose. And that is to ask God what's on my heart. That he would answer my prayer and help me to be what I need to be. I don't know about you tonight, but I want to be what God wants me to be. And uh, I pray that God would do that in my life. And if you're in the center of God's will, I don't know any place better to be Amen. than the center of God's will. A lot of times we're not there because we choose not to be there, but that's the place you want to be, right in the center of His will. I said last night, I was talking to him about the, I got to thinking about that story about Samuel, you know, when he, when he heard God talk to him, but he thought it was Eli. You know, we, and, and I, don't, I didn't say this last night, but in that fifth chapter of the book of Acts, 
You know, when Peter was being, he was being tortured for preaching the gospel, he said this. He said, I think we ought to obey God rather than man. And if you can know it's God speaking to you tonight, then do what he tells you to do. And if you'll do that, we'll have a good service tonight. I thank God for that. Don't forget about our tithes and offerings, but as we go to prayer tonight, we have a lot of urgent needs. When we were praying today, I was thinking about, we started asking prayer for different people. And we have a lot of people with spouses here that are unsaved. I, I wish we'd get that on our hearts. You know, it'd be good to see families come together, wouldn't it? Wouldn't it be nice to have whole families come together? And you know something, men of God, they, I don't know what the percentages are, but if men get saved, usually the whole family gets saved. And so we ought to be praying for our men of this church. You know, if they're not saved, we ought to get them on our heart that God would save them. Because I'm going to tell you something, that changes things. And so on, I'm going to pray for the men of our church. I'm going to pray for our spouses of the church that are not saved, our children, some of our children that are not saved. I want you to start getting them on their heart. And when you come around these altars to pray, no matter what's going on in your life, if we start praying for somebody else, just like that song said, we get our minds off ourselves and get them on somebody else, then maybe God will start working in our lives and in our family. So before we ask for anything today, I want to thank him for what he's done, how, what he's been to me, what he's done for me all these years. And you know, the Bible says to be thankful in all things, for this is the will of God concerning you in Christ Jesus. And I believe we ought to be thankful for what God's done. We, we're, we're just coming out of Thanksgiving. We ought to be thankful for that. B Vicky put all the Christmas stuff up today. I didn't do a thing. <laughs> she didn't like it much, but she didn't gripe, gripe and complain. She loves Christmas. And uh, she got all the decorations up today, you know, and I got to thinking about having family over. And, you know, a lot of you are going to have family over the next few weeks, and some of them are not saved. And uh, what a time of year to be saved it would be around Christmas time, the time of his birth. And so I pray for your families. I, pray. I really honestly want to remember that in prayer tonight. We have Ryan Brandenburg got out of the hospital, I think. I, the last I heard, I think he did. Uh, he's doing some better. I want to continue to pray for him. Uh, that, was, that was going around on the prayer request while we were on vacation. We got that. Uh, Bennett's uh, having a real rough time this week. Um, he, he, he was, she, she thought he was just, you know, he's been really agitated, and she didn't know why. But she found out he had double ear infection, and he's got a, some kind of throat problem. That's why he was crying and, and going on. So he, he needs a lot of prayer. He's got surgery coming up. Good. Praise God. That, our prayer's done something then. That's right. We anointed, we, we anointed Tony for that for church. Thank God for answered prayers. Glad to hear that. That, make, that ought to get us excited. Aren't you thankful for how God listens to people like us? Boy, that's something. Roger Manning needs prayer. Uh, Randy Davis needs prayer. Kenny Miles needs prayer. Our country sure needs prayer. And you know, I was thinking about all these tragedies we've had lately. You know, I the, de the devil's, listen, we're, we're fighting an adversary. You know, it looks like the Bible says we don't fight against flesh and blood. We fight against principalities, powers, wickedness in high places. Rulers of darkness of this world, and they're everywhere. But I'm going to tell you something. I serve a God that's bigger than that. And even in the midst of that trouble, even those killings they had this week when a guy ran all over those people and that kid decided to shoot people, I don't know why it goes through people's mind other than they're just possessed by evil. But, but I pray that somehow God will take those situations and make them something that will glorify His name. And I know He can. Even in, even in difficult times like that, I pray that God would move on our country. And you know something? It starts with me and you tonight. It starts with the preaching of God's Word. And if we'll receive that gospel with gladness, then whatever comes our way, we'll know that God's completely in charge, 100%. And I believe that tonight. I want us to come together tonight... Uh, does anybody have something special I didn't ask? Does anybody have, anybody have something before we go to prayer? Yes. Amen. 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 Also, I want to remember Jimmy's wife, too, and family. He's, he, they're going through some things. That I didn't mention that. So let's pray for our service today. Let's pray. For, yes, Teresa. Okay, let's 
remember that tonight. Yes, I'm sorry to see somebody. Yes. That's right. Yes. Yep. 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 Yes. Amen, sister. Amen. 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 Let's remember her. Yes. Yes. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for tonight. And God, we come to you in the name of Jesus right now. God, we ask that you would take control of this service, that your will would be accomplished, that everything that's said and done tonight would be uplifting to you and you alone, that we would step aside and allow your Holy Spirit to direct and have full control in our service and in our lives. God, I pray that you would speak to hearts tonight. I know that we're, we're not here by accident. We've come expecting to hear from you. And I just pray that you would speak to each and every one of us. If we'll be attentive and listen for your voice, you will speak to each and every one of us. You'll encourage our hearts. You'll save the lost. God, I just pray tonight that if there's anyone here that doesn't know you, I pray that you would soften their hearts even now to hear the gospel, the gospel that's going to be shared 
when our pastor stands behind this pulpit, the truth that he's going to bring out in Scripture that will penetrate hearts if we just allow it. So God, I pray that you would take away the hardness that the devil tries to put on us so much. And I just pray that you would speak through our pastor tonight. God, be with each and every one of these prayer requests. We know that you know each and every one of them. And we know that they're dear to your heart. And we know that you just want us to lift them up so that we know when you answer them that it's because we reached out to you and it increases our faith. So I pray that you would touch and answer each and every one of these requests. I pray that you would help us to minister to our children that are lost and help those that will be in their paths to, to step up and say the things that needs to be said. I pray that you would put a godly person in our children's path to where it, they just would speak words of wisdom into their life. If they won't believe mom and dad, maybe they'll believe someone else a stranger, whoever it might be. Use each and every one of us. Maybe we're to be the one that speaks to other uh, families, kids that are lost. I pray that you would reach them in the name of Jesus. I pray right now that you would have your way in the remainder of this service, that you would be lifted up, that you would be just, just fill this place, I ask. Have your way now in the remainder of this service. And God, we ask it all in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let's sing that chorus tonight. He my turn again so bear with me tonight but um, I'm singing this first song for a friend who can't be here tonight um, but I told her I was going to sing it and she listens to the live stream she has to work so um, this is for Christy Amen. Amen. I just stole Jimmy's chord so <laughs>
There'll be winds of pain and sadness walk me tonight and we were practicing and she picked up this song this next song and the first time that I ever heard it I was actually on on Facebook today and I was scrolling I was listening to her daddy preach and the next video after that was this song and when I got here she said I'm singing this song and I said that's a good song I don't know it very good but it's a good song uh, and it's called it's called the only scars in heaven and uh, I want you to really listen to it when I was at home I was almost in tears the first time I heard it so it really shocked me that she had it picked out to sing when we got here. But I know you'll be blessed by the words. There's a wound here in my heart where something's missing. And they tell me that it's going to heal with time. But I know you're in a place where all your wounds have been erased. And the wings healed is healing mine. Baby. 
on the hands that hold you now. I know the road you walked was anything but easy. You picked up your share of scars along the way. Oh, but now you're standing in the sun. You fought your fight and your race is run. The pain is all a million miles away. The only stars in heaven, they won't belong to me and you. There'll be no such thing. Is a kingdom of peace. It is reigning within. It shall ever increase in my soul. We possess it right here when he saves from all sin and will last while the ages shall roll. You know, the kingdom of God message is one of the most positive, uplifting, soul stirring, and inspiring messages found in the entire scriptures. But even greater than the message is the experience. When Jesus was demanded of the Pharisees when the kingdom of God should come, Jesus answered, The kingdom of God cometh not with observation. In other words, it will never be observed with men's physical eyes. It will never be physically established upon the earth. But the kingdom of God is to be experienced in our hearts. God establishes his kingdom in our lives. Then Jesus would say, neither shall they say, lo here or lo there. For behold, the kingdom of God is within you. While many churches forfeit the kingdom message altogether. 
Their preachers and priests don't preach it, and no one experiences it. They hold back from the people. I believe they rob the people of God of one of the greatest experiences and truths found anywhere in the Bible. Others put the kingdom out yonder. Out in the future time and future day, they try to somehow encourage those who listen to them and say, well, someday Jesus will establish his kingdom. Or they say, someday Jesus will come and reign upon this earth. And someday Jesus will be crowned king. Well, I've got news for you, my friend. He's already crowned king. He's already Lord. He's already overcome this world. And though that the someday might give a glimmer of hope, how much more can a present kingdom and a present king do for every person where Christ reigns within us? Yet many people today still reject God's kingdom. And many reject the reign of Christ. And they reject the experience of the present kingdom of God. I believe there's a great example of this given to us in the Old Testament. And it's found in 1 Samuel, the 8th chapter. We read tonight, we began... 1 Samuel chapter 8, we begin in verse 1. The Bible records, and it came to pass when Samuel was old that he made his sons judges over Israel. Now the name of his firstborn was Joe, and the name of his second Abia. They were judges in Beersheba. And his sons walked not in his ways, but turned aside after Lucre. And took bribes and perverted judgment. Then all the elders of Israel gathered themselves together and came to Samuel unto Ramah. And said unto him, Behold, thou art old, and thy sons walk not in thy ways. Now make us a king to judge us like all the nations. But the thing displeased Samuel when they said, Give us a king to judge us. And Samuel prayed unto the Lord. And the Lord said unto Samuel, Hearken unto the voice of the people in all that they say unto thee. For they have not rejected thee, but they have rejected me, that I should not reign over them. May God add his blessing to his word tonight. Give us a king. Father, tonight we pray for the anointing of your spirit. We pray, Lord, that you would just settle down amongst us in our midst. And may the name of Christ be glorified. We pray, Holy Spirit of God, that you would take this service where you want it to go. We pray for power from on high. And Father, we pray a rebuke against the forces of hell. Lord, you know that men and women tonight are in need. Dear God, we know tonight that Jesus can meet every need. For Lord, you're the soul-satisfying Savior. You're the lifter of our head, the lover of our soul. You're the strength by which we live by. You're our strong tower, our refuge. Thank God tonight, if God be for us, who can be against us? So Lord, feed your flock tonight. Bless your word. Father, it's your word that makes all the difference. In Jesus' name we pray, God's people said, Amen. Well, we pick up here tonight where the people of God had rejected the judges over Israel. They had rejected Samuel's sons, Joe and Abia. As the Bible says there, what we read in verse 3, it says, and his sons, Samuel's sons, walked not in his ways, but turned aside after lucre and took bribes and perverted judgment. You know, God calls the minister in the ministry to be pure. Amen. He calls the minister in the ministry to be a clean and pure ministry, and God wants pure ministers. He wants men and women to hold a godly and biblical standard, to hold integrity and purity of life. 
And above all, he wants the ministers to be Christ-like in character and conduct. And God makes all of his people ministers in the New Testament. What are you trying to say, Pastor? I'm trying to say God wants a clean, spirit-filled ministry. Clean, spirit-filled ministers because God wants a clean, spirit-filled church. Isn't it true? As Paul told the church in 1 Corinthians 9, he says that the Lord ordained, even so hath the Lord ordained that they which preach the gospel should live of the gospel. They that preach the gospel must live the gospel. Many have rejected this command and have disqualified themselves because of their stubborn pride and their perverted ways. Brother, I want to tell you, we must not only preach the truth, we must live the truth. But again, it says, Samuel's sons, his sons walked not in his way, but turned aside after lucre. How many know tonight money talks? Many have been led to do things simply bit because of money. But this I also know money walks. Many have turned aside from following God and being true to Christ because they've served and followed the desire to have more. More of this world and more money and to make more so they can have more. But brother, I'm going to tell you what, if you don't have God, you don't have anything. You can have all the things of this world, but brother, I'm going to tell you, you're not going to take them with you. Even though Samuel's sons were rejected by the people of God, even worse, Israel was rejecting God. They had rejected God's rule and reign over them. They wanted another king. Listen again. Verse 4, Then all the elders of Israel gathered themselves together and came to Samuel unto Ramah and said unto him, Behold, thou art old, thy sons walk not in thy ways. Now make us a king to judge us like all the nations. But the thing displeased Samuel when they said, Give us a king to judge us. And Samuel prayed unto the Lord. In other words, Israel started to look around at all the other nations. And they said, Why can't we be like them? Give us a king like they have. We want an earthly king over us. Listen, is this not what we have in churches today? The departure from Christ as king, the departure from having God alone reigning over us. People say, let us be like everyone else. Churches are like, why can't we be like others? Let us have a king, someone that we can follow. I'm telling you, friend, we've already got a king. His name is Jesus. The Bible says, and the Lord said unto Samuel, Hearken unto the voice of the people in all that they say unto thee, for they have not rejected thee, but they have rejected me, that I should not reign over them. From the early days of Christianity and building of Christ's church, from Christ building his church, people have always been confused about when and where the kingdom of God should come. That the kingdom of God is not a physical, but a spiritual kingdom. And that the church of God is not a denomination ruled by man, but she is God's spiritual building ruled by God alone. And that Christ is not coming back to establish a kingdom, for he has already established a kingdom. And that kingdom is in the hearts of his people that allow him to rule and reign in their hearts and in their lives. Brother, how could anyone reject this message? Surely baffles the mind. How could anyone hear the message and see the church and receive the truth revealed by the Holy Ghost, yet reject the truth and walk away and go back into bondage? Why would anyone not want to be free from the bondage of man rule? Why would anyone want to leave the truth and go back into bondage, into slavery, and say, give me a king, I want to follow an earthly king, or I want to follow a man? Yet that's what the people of God were demanding here. Give us a king. God says, they have rejected me, that I should not reign over them. 
know, we sing that old song, Brother Jim, the church's jubilee. But do we really understand its meaning? Do we understand when we're singing the Bible is our rule of faith and Christ alone is Lord? And we are equal in His sight when we obey His word? Do we understand that no earthly master do we know, but to man rule will not bow, but to each other and to God eternal trueness bow. And I think it's the third or last verse that says, Oh, blessed truth that broke our bonds, in it we now rejoice. While in the holy church of God, we hear our Savior's voice. And gladly to His blessed will, submissive we shall be. And from the yokes of Babel lords, from henceforth we are free. Now I understand that some just sing this song and they're just mouthing words. And then some trample over and disregard these precious truths. Brother, I've learned a long time ago, you got to be wise. And don't cast your pearls before the swine. But brother and sister, if you've experienced the glorious truth, if you've come out from man rule, if you've fled Babylon, if you've come out of denominationalism, and if you've cut ties with every other master, I'm telling you, Jesus Christ, He's your only King, and you'll never want to go back. There's nothing to go back to. Sadly, though, today, they're like... Many today, just like those that said, we want another king. We want another king than Jesus. Second of all, God tells Samuel to, well, show the people what kind of king they're requesting. Go ahead and show them. Verse 9, it says, therefore, hearken unto their voice, howbeit yet. Protest solemnly unto them and show them the manner of the king that shall reign over them. And Samuel told all the words of the Lord unto the people that asked of him a king. And he said, This will be the manner of the king that shall reign over you. He will take your sons and appoint them for himself, for his chariots, to be his horsemen. Some shall run before his chariots. He will appoint him captains over thousands and captains over fifties. And will set them to ear his ground. To ear his ground and to reap his harvest and to make his instruments of war and instruments of his chance. He will take your daughters to be confectionaries, to be cooks, to be bakers. He will take your fields, your vineyards, your olive guards, even of the best of them and give them to his servants. He will take the tenth of your seed of your vineyards and give to his officers and to his servants. He will take your men servants, your maid servants, your goodliest young men, your asses, and put them to his work. He will take the tenth of your sheep, and ye shall be in his servants. Verse 18, And ye shall cry out in that day because of your king which you have chosen you, and the Lord will not hear you in that day. In other words, he's saying you will be in bondage. And the king that you're asking for, he will rob you of the blessings of God. You remember when Pilate had Jesus at the judgment hall and Pilate questioned Jesus about his kingship? And Pilate said, Art thou the king of the Jews? Jesus simply answered in John 18, 36, My kingdom is not of this world. Christ makes it clear. His kingdom is not of this world. His kingdom is not an earthly kingdom established on earthly soil but His kingdom is established in the earthen vessel, in the soil of the human heart. When this truth is planted in good soil, and Satan is not allowed to steal it, and the seed is sown, which has been found in a humble and hungry heart, brother, the blessings are thirty, some sixty, and some a hundredfold. The kingdom of God Biblically defined as the spiritual reign of Christ. 
where God rules and reigns in us and we in Him. Luke 9 verse 1 says, Then Jesus called His twelve disciples together and gave them power and authority over all devils and to cure diseases. And He sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. Now let me ask you, how could they preach a future kingdom and promise people that someday they could be healed or delivered? No, brother. The kingdom of God had already come and the power of God was present to do the work of God. In Mark 10, verse 15, the Bible says, Verily I say unto you, Whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child, he shall not enter therein. Humility is a prerequisite, my friend, of the power, of the blessings, of the kingdom of God. Jesus said in Matthew 12, 28, But if I cast out devils by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God is come unto you. Well, John the Revelator. Revelation of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the Revelator. John was revealing what Christ was giving to him. And he said, I heard a loud voice saying in heaven now has come salvation and strength and kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ for the accuser of the brethren of our brethren is cast down which accused them before our God day and night. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb, by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives even unto the death. Brother, listen, the kingdom of God is not only the spiritual reign of and rule of Christ that the kingdom of God is experienced by the inner dwelling power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Is that not true? For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Jesus had made the entrance into His kingdom and this experience a spiritual requirement. He said in John 3, 3, except the man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Let me put it to you this way. The spiritual birth puts us into the place where we can truly see the kingdom of God. But the Holy Ghost puts us into the place where we can spiritually enjoy the kingdom of God. And brother, I tell you, that's what's lacking today. We, I know, I've been a pastor long enough to see how much people struggle. It just seems like life is a struggle. We're trying to make it. We're trying to just get, sometimes we lay our head down at the pillow and say, thank God I made it another day. But I want to tell you, where's the power of God? Where's the victory of Christ? If Christ is reigning in your heart and we're reigning with Him, brother, we are overcomers. We are more than conquerors. Christ has defeated this whole world. Somebody said, brother, you keep preaching like that, the devil's going to be on your back. I said, brother, he's under my feet. Where he belongs. Now the sad commentary of Samuel's day is the sad commentary of our day. Verse 19 says, nevertheless, the people refused to obey the voice of Samuel. And they said, Nay, but we will have a king over us, that we may also be like all the nations, that our king may judge us and go out before us and fight our battles. Friend, listen, the early church enjoyed the spiritual reign of Christ, and they enjoyed the results. Many were saved by the power of the preaching of the word of God and conviction fell. Many were healed, demons cast out, the sick were recovered, sometimes just by the shadow of the apostles. I'm telling you, brother, there was a power within them, and friend, we can have the same power tonight. They met opposition. They met opposition. We meet opposition. All Christians will meet opposition. If you're going to stand true for God, you will be find opposition. In Acts 17, it says, These have turned the world upside down, and are come hither also, whom Jason received, and these do all contrary to the decrees of Caesar, saying, Notice, there is another king, one Jesus. Amen. Well, bless your heart, I'm going to tell you tonight, there's another king, and his name is Jesus. 
They held true to their king, King Jesus. And yet by and by there came those who said, give us a king like others have. What a commentary of the church. There are many today just like that. That we may also be like all the nations that our king may judge us and go out before us and fight our battles. Listen, the church reformation of the past few centuries has been a glorious reform where God has brought back some of the greatest truths to the mind of man that is able to, capable of receiving. That the church is built by Christ, that He's the foundation. That the church is led and organized by the Holy Ghost. That the names and members that are in the church are those that are in the Lamb's book of life. And that the Bible, the Holy Scriptures, is our only rule of faith and discipline. And the fellowship is of those that are blood-bought, redeemed. And we are free in Christ, sanctified by the Spirit, joined together in unity by the Holy Ghost. Human role and ecclesiasticism in rejecting the rule and reign of Christ and rejecting the present kingdom of God and the divine authority of the Word and the Spirit has always resulted in God's people being led into darkness. Many churches and denominations today reject the light and truth of the Holy Spirit. The Apostle Paul told those elders in the church at Ephesus, he said, Take heed, therefore, unto yourselves, and to all the flock over which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers, to feed the church of God, which he has purchased with his own blood. I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. Also of your own selves shall men arise, speaking perverse things, to draw away disciples after them. Brother, I want to tell you, I did take some college courses and I know a little bit about physics and dynamics. I know enough about jet propulsion. But I want to tell you, I also know a sheep is a sheep and a wolf is a wolf. One, my friend, is meek and mild and the other wants to tear you apart. And rather than me nature of Jesus Christ is the meekness. I'm not saying that he's not the lion and the lamb. But brother, I can tell you what, we need to protect the church from the wolf spirit. We don't need religious leaven confusing people and leading people astray. If I want to be a Catholic and believe what the Catholics teach and follow the Catholics, well, I would go there. If I, wanted the, if I want what the Baptists believe and teach and follow, I would go there. I'm going to upset some of you. I already know that. If I want to be what the Methodists believe and teach and follow, I would go there. If I want what the Pentecostals believe and teach and follow, I would go there. But brother, if I want Christ as my king, if I want God's word as my only article of faith to follow, if I want the Holy Ghost to be my teacher, my comforter, and guide, and I want to enjoy what the early church enjoyed, brother, I'm following Jesus. I'm not going to follow your man-made doctrine, your man-made ways. Brother, I'm going to tell you, we're in this thing because God's built her. She's a gift from God. She's been endued with the power of the Holy Ghost. How dare a man or a woman try to get in the way of the Spirit of the living God. Brother, I'm going to tell you, it's a dangerous thing to mess with God. It's about time that we bow and let Christ be King and Lord. Bible says in the early church they continued daily with one accord in the temple, breaking bread from house to house, did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily, such as should be saved. Well, how about that? Well, John, he's, he's had his head in the book and he's preparing for his next message, but he is also taking courses online, Liberty University. <clears throat> it's been one of the online uh, colleges that have really touched the hearts and, and produced 
men and women who want to see souls saved. You can't say that about a lot of colleges anymore. And sadly, even the Church of God. Such a lack of burden for the lost. Wanting to see people say, well, he's taking an evangelism course. And his course, and by the way, it's due by Monday. He's got to, he got to write a paper on how he's, you got to share the gospel with somebody that's unsaved and they've got to respond. And then you've got to re- write a paper on how they got saved. And I sat there and I listened to that for a minute. I started scratching my head and I started thinking, well, when's the last time somebody's asked the Holy Spirit to help? I thought the Holy Spirit brought somebody under conviction. You can't, just can't say follow A, B, C and you're saved and you just put them into the church and get them busy and working for God. But I want to tell you, you got to be born of the Spirit. And it takes a spiritual birth. But bro, I'll tell you, that's what the God, that's what the Lord wants to do. And, and so we come in tonight and we're saying, well, just try to pick somebody. <laughs> and write a paper. And tell them the truth. We're living in a day, friend, where men and women don't really want to bow to Christ as alone. As their king. And they're not allowing the kingdom of God to reign in their lives and reign in their hearts. The Bible says, Unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood, and hath made us kings and priests unto God and his Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. We are reigning with Christ right now. What do you reign over? We reign with Christ right now. What has Christ conquered? Brother, He's conquered this whole world. He's conquered sin. He's conquered death. He's conquered hell. Jesus Christ has conquered it all. And the Bible says we as God's people are seated with Him and heavenly places that we reign with him now. If he reigns in our life, friend, we are reigning with him here and now. Paul said to the church in Rome, he said, For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one. Jesus Christ. Notice those words. We shall reign in life. Christ is the true king. His kingdom is established tonight in the hearts of the people who love him. That allow him to be crowned as Lord and king of their lives. There has to be a priority put upon Christ and his kingdom. When Jesus said in Matthew 6.33, Seek ye first the kingdom of God. And his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. He was saying put priority upon where the priority needs to be put. I believe why so many Christians struggle, hear me tonight. Because they're not truly reigning with Christ. We give the devil way too much credit. We really do. And we try to say, oh, someday Jesus is going to come and He's going to be bound, and man, he ain't going to bother us no more. I'm telling you right now, he's bound by the word of God. He's bound by the name of Jesus Christ. He is bound by the spirit of God. He is bound by the power of the blood of Jesus Christ. And we overcome. We are conquerors in Christ. We reign with him. We are seated with him. And one of these days, he's coming back for those that have allowed him to be their king. You won't crown Jesus king. He's already king. And so whether you reject him or accept him, my friend, he's still king. If you want another king, God will allow you to have another king. If you want another pastor, God will allow you to have another pastor. 
Brother, I want to tell you what. Jesus Christ is my king. And to him alone we bow. Father, we thank you tonight for your word. Dear God, we know the forces of hell have hated this. We know the carnal man would rise up and try to come against us. Father, we're standing on your word tonight, and it is settled in heaven. And tonight we pray, Father, if there's somebody here whose name's not in the book of life, pray here tonight, Lord, if someone who has not putting priority upon the kingdom and serving Christ as their king, help them to come forward tonight. We pray tonight, Father, a rebuke against all the work of Satan and all the lies that Satan has told to try to keep the people of God in bondage. We thank you for the glorious liberty and the glorious truth. Father, we're thankful tonight that Christ is the revelator and he reveals to those eyes that are seeking, those hearts that are hungry, those that are humble. I'm going to invite you to come. Come on, just step out to an altar of prayer. Come on down here. Come on, brother. Come on, sister. Make your way. Say, tonight, Jesus, you're my only king. And I need your kingship. I need your lordship. I need your help. I need your guidance. I need your blessings. Upon my life, upon my family, Satan is destroying. But tonight, I bow to you and you alone. Father, for these that would respond, we thank you. Those that are watching tonight, Father, we pray that this truth will find good soil. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Come on, step out and come tonight. I'm going to ask some of you Christians to come on down here and pray. Come on. Let's let God work tonight. Let him have his way. Come on, Holy Spirit. Come on. Have your way tonight, please. Have your way.
world, all its wealth and riches. I don't need its fame, its mighty desire to live for me. Oh, if you could see where Jesus brought me from to where I am today. You would know the reason why I love Him so. Oh, you can't take this world, all its wealth and riches. I don't need her fame. It's my desire. It's my desire. It's my desire to live for I'd rather be than to be with God's people. If you don't want to be with God's people, you won't want to go to heaven because they're going to be there. So we want you to get up and surround the church tonight and let's be dismissed in prayer. And let's pray for our services this weekend and pray that God would just move in everything that we do here. Pray for the group that's coming. Don't forget to tell somebody about it.